Campanotto Seance. What to expect after one year with your colony. A bunch of ant keeping tips. Right after the intro. Hello and welcome to another NCVNA video everyone. Now, before you say, Evangelos, what are you doing? Campanotus Lignipertus should belong in hibernation. I ask you to calm your horses. I assure you, my colonies are long in hibernation and doing well. You can also see updates of them on my Instagram account. I have recorded this footage in advance. I just didn't have time to put all my thoughts into a video, which is what I am going to do now for you guys. So, what can you expect of your Campanotus Lignipardus, or as a matter of fact, any Campanotus colony after approximately one year of keeping? For this, I am going to assume that you started your journey with a single queen, which is an experience I highly recommend, since not only does it create a special bond to them, but it also gives you, as their keeper, the time to grow with your colony and learn what their needs are. The growth of your colony will depend on many factors. And I am saying this because I have multiple queens and colonies of the species and have noticed vast differences in their development speed. But what do you mean by vast differences, Evangelos? Well, I have queens that are in the second year of keeping and only have five to six workers, while others manage to get from 12 to 15 workers in their first month after I found them. So what causes this major variation in the growth speeds of different colonies? Before I tell you that, I'd ask you to hit that like button if you find my video helpful or don't if you didn't. And feel free to support me by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon if you haven't already. This way you can make sure you won't miss any of the giveaways we are going to have soon. Back to our subject now. From my personal experience, there are a few factors that can and will affect the growth and thrive of your Campanotus colony. And for me, that will be Campanotus Lignipertus to specify it. So, of all the factors that I can think of, the first that comes to mind is the most obvious and the most important one, the initial setup of your colony. This refers to whether you have your queen in a test tube or not, for example. Having her in a test tube ensures that she has access to water at all times, which is very crucial not only to ants, but also to almost any species on our planet, including us humans. Now, of course, you can put her somewhere in like an utong or acrylic nest or farm, but that in itself comes with two inherited drawbacks. First, you have to water them regularly. Make sure you don't forget since ants are very, very sensitive to drought. Even species that don't need particularly humid conditions to survive can die if they don't get water regularly. Second, by having to water your queen you're almost certainly going to disturb her in one way or another. No matter how careful you are, be it the incoming light or the vibrations that you cause during the movement of your setup. Disturbing your queen early on can cause her to panic. When a Campanotus queen is under stress or thinks she isn't safe, she might first not lay any eggs at all or 
She may even consume the eggs and or larvae she has produced so far herself. But what about food? Don't ants need anything to eat? Yes, of course they do. But, and this is a big but, if we are talking about a freshly caught queen, then feeding her initially isn't always a must. That goes assuming she belongs to a fully clustered species, which use the energy stored in their now no longer needed wing muscles to nourish their first set of larvae. So, what do I recommend? Personally, I had the best results when I prepared a nice test tube for my queens, adding a little bit of soil and one or two drops of honey water, and only checking on them every couple of weeks. Now, does following these steps ensure a steady and fast growth of your colony? No, not at all. Even when providing your queen with what we mentioned up to now, she might not lay any eggs at all. Yes, a queen can be infertile even if she has already dropped her wings when you found her. Luckily, the opposite can also be true. Even if a queen has not shed her wings yet, she can be fertilized. I myself found three Campanotus lignipertus queens with wings this end season, and all of them were exceptionally fertile, growing many workers in little time. By the way, all these tips we discuss here don't only apply to Campanotus queens, guys and girls. They are true for many ant species out there. So, to wrap everything we talked about up in a checklist. The best start you can give your Campanotus queen is to put her in a test tube with a couple of honey water drops, put the test tube in a dark place with an ideal temperature of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and don't disturb her too often. I can't stress this enough, guys. And this last one is probably the hardest one to pull off. If you're new to ant keeping or you got your first queen of a species you didn't have up to now, you automatically feel the urge to check and see if everything is fine five times a day. But trust me, letting her alone do her thing is the best thing you can do for her early on. Period. As with everything in life, finding a queen with her being fertile and naturally good not only at laying but also at growing her eggs into workers also needs a fair amount of luck. If you are buying a Campanotus queen, I suggest buy one with workers. First, because this is a good proof she is fertile. Yes, I know many ant dealers do push queens especially Campanotus ones because of their naturally slow development, but that's a topic for another video. And second, because you get some more action early on. The more workers a queen has, the less vulnerable she feels, and the more movement you get to see as a keeper. With that being said, all colonies I have and display in my videos for you were found by myself as queens. With a few exceptions being exotic species that I simply can't find here in Austria and some others that I casually traded with other ant keepers. Since the online ant keeper community is not only awesome but always very helpful in my experience so far. At this point I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys my fellow ant keepers that are watching at this point. And now I am going to leave you with the question of the day. What Campanotus ant do you keep? 
If any, how did you get them? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.